Okay, well, I'll, I'm going to start if that's all right. Um, yeah, so I'm just going to ask how everyone, how everything's going fitness-wise um, for the squad ahead of the game and how the warm weather break has been in terms of... You know, yeah, the warm weather break was <laughs> lovely. Or should I say fit, training, should I say, not break? Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it was a perfect time to go. Yeah. I think when you're away, 10, 12 days from Christmas, that's the first time we've done that and I really valued the time for the squad and I think they did with each other because half the time you're playing a game, go to a hotel, you know, you go for something to eat and everybody goes to their room. So they actually got the time to interact, spend time together. So really, really valuable time. They come back, weather's been glorious and yeah, just settling into the second half of the season. I mean, the weather's never ever the greatest this time of the year, but this is England. And um, fitness wise, is everyone okay? Yeah. Mostly go oh, that's good. Everyone's job. okay. Yeah. I'm still Penila and her situation, but yeah, everybody else is okay. And obviously, first match again this term against Arsenal in the WSL. I mean, what's the mood within the squad like going into into this match? How's the mindset amongst the players? I think sometimes we almost expect me to say something extraordinary about this when the realities are. Um, I don't know. Is the the, the paper you're going to produce tomorrow going to be any different to the one that you were asked to do last week? I, I don't. Maybe maybe if it's around areas you're more or less interested in. As far as I'm concerned, to win a league, every game has to be interesting and every game has to be treated with the same amount of respect. And this one is no different. Um, nice that it's a stadium with a packed crowd. I know the players enjoy that. So just ready for the second half of the season to resume, I think. And obviously Arsenal, without uh, Viviana Mead and, Aram and, and Beth Mead, um, but they brought in, G brought back Gio Kiros from loan from Everton, um, they've added Catherine Cool to their ranks in Victoria Pullover. How do you assess where they are um, this season, How, in terms of the challenge that they'll maybe pose to your team in, in this match? Um, I try, try not to focus on players that are absent from squads because first of all you know that that's not going to play a part on the game in the game on Sunday whether whomever's absent for us or absent for them I think the players that are fit for them are the ones we have to focus on just as it is for us I think it's probably right for me to say that my condolences are with Beth Mead more importantly as a human being um, what an extremely tough time that person is going through and um, I'm thinking about her today, uh, forget football, um, she deserves that and, um, and while her absence will be greatly missed on the pitch by her team, I think today is about her team and the football community being around her in what is a really tough time in her life. Yeah, that is very sad news that again, yeah. and, you know, and she's obviously dealt with that bravely building up to this, but then, you know, thanks for condolences is there. And just for the players who are new within Chelsea, the ones who, this is their first kind of London derby game, apart from uh, Slipcover, against mm -hmm. Arsenal. I mean, what's their kind of uh, mood going into this? How excited are the likes of, like, Kadisha Buchanan going into this match? Do you know what I haven't asked her? Kadisha's the most chilled out person. And for her... I'm sure she did say to me while we were away in the camp that she notices how much harder the league is. So I think for her, every game is a challenge as opposed to it being, you know, one game or another. But she takes that in her stride. You know, she's, um, I think, helpfully, I say, someone who is just takes takes things as they come from game to game and. Um, I'm sure she's looking forward to the second half of the season to build on some of the good work she's done in the first half and and one where she's played in the biggest games. Like not a lot of these players out, they're used to packed stadiums, they're used to big games. So I actually think we probably need to spend uh, less time talking about it being big games or big stadiums or big crowds. And actually, it's really normal for us now. Um, and maybe it's about, well, how do we turn 44,000 into 66? I think that's where I think we should be aiming for the next step. And Arsenal have done a tremendous job. 
at packing the numbers into Emirates. They're a real, I think, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, an inspiration for the rest of the league in terms of, you know, putting large numbers in big stadiums. For you, do you want to see, you know, with Chelsea you've played more games at Stanford Bridge, so for you going forward, would you like to see kind of half, half of that, you know, with seasons going forward as well for, for you, your side? Yeah, I think, yeah, I'd, I'd happily play at Stanford Bridge, but I'd, I want to play with a busy Stanford Bridge. I've always said that. I think people just, I like crowds. I enjoy crowds. So if that crowd is 5,000, it's packed, or it's 50,000, and the big thing, don't care, I just like a crowd. Just one more from me, sorry, Catherine. Um, yeah, just uh, off the pitch, we've seen kind of more discussion about um, maternity uh, support or maternity leave for players. And obviously, great that we've got pay now in the WSL Women's Championship, I think, as well. But do you feel, Reading's Emma Mitchell spoke about kind of like looking at wider areas in terms of support for, for expectant mums and new mums. I mean, what, what kind of other areas do you think maybe uh, football powers that we need to look at in terms of additional support for players? Who are I think I can only speak about our own situation and managing Melanie Leopold's and I think one of the good pieces of work we've done is recognise as a team, i.e. the staff team, where are our expertise is and what we've needed to draft in. So I think one of the big things that we've done really, really well is, is brought in pelvic floor specialist, uh, both in terms of physio, in terms of the management of that, um, prenatal and postnatal. And that expertise has guided our medical team because it's an area we, we don't necessarily have an expertise in. I think we've done that really, really well. I think the recognition that there isn't a time frame from which people can return. A natural birth versus a C-section is something very different. Um, and then there was also the emotional impact of not only um, leaving your child to come back to training, but how and who is going to manage that if it's not going to be a partner. And these are all going to be learning curves across the league. And I know this going through the situation myself, that there isn't... I, th I don't think you can have just almost like a, you know, a box of clear answers. I think every culture is going to be very different. But I think recognising that we might not have that expertise amongst us, that we have to think about how we put that into the women's games, into the women's game and around the teams, so that expertise is guiding how we manage somebody from before a child to after a child and on the pitch and and I also think it's probably fair to speak to Melanie Leopold about this and her experience because there's things that we will for sure need to learn um, to do it even better but I think a multidisciplinary approach inclusive of the player with outside expertise has been helpful in our case. Thanks very much and good luck this Sunday. Thanks, Emma. Hi, Emma. Um, new signing announced today. I'm probably not going to pronounce her name right, Mike, Mike Hamano. Yeah. Um, obviously, a young player. She's going to go out on loan, but I just wondered kind of, you know, how long you've been watching her for, how excited you are to see her, obviously, you know, develop at the club. Yeah, I, I, I think we're at that stage of our journey now where we recognise that to, to play at this level is not as simple as just making a sign and bringing them into your club that development pathway for the younger player now is going to involve preparation that might see them cross borders, whether it's in Micah's direction or Georgia Fox out to Brighton, etc. Aggie Beaver Jones. The, the loan process is one that we should embrace, especially when development of the league and the top teams within that league has just grown exponentially so I think recruiting first of all top talent you know she's she's clever she's a special player but she needs time physically to develop coming from my neck to to Chelsea is too big a jump you know when G made that jump it was she was older more experienced but it's a good 
situation for that player to go and develop under our watchful eye and we can support in and around that knowing once again there isn't she can't have an immediate time frame like oh is she back in the summer i don't know Let's see how she copes with sweden first but i know that we've got a bright prospect for the future and and one that i know our journey is is going to be um, as i said involving a lot a few weeks more weeks left of the transfer window um are you happy with the squad as it is do you kind of foresee any more incomings coming in obviously beth england's left um perhaps when he reduces that that depth slightly in the forward areas can, do, do you kind of want to get more bodies in the building before beyond january ends? um to be honest with you doing business in january isn't our preference because no you know we we prefer strategically to work you know in the june transfer window and our work to be honest with you is about getting that part done um I can't, Melanie Leopold is a new signing, <laughs> believe it or not, it feels like, and honestly having watched it today in training, it's not going to take very long. Um, can I envisage another player in the door? Not really. However, things do happen in football and if something presented it himself, then maybe, but I can't really see it. I've got enough to manage, thanks. That you kind of have to balance your own, maybe your own interests in terms of Beth leaving, and, and obviously her kind of desire to play maybe more regularly to you know try and get in that World Cup squad, but also then you're losing a you know a good player for your side as well. But um, how much kind of was that a difficult decision for you? Listen, Beth, Beth is a top player who you know every one of my players are too good to sit on the bench, but finding the right time. For a player in a club to move in another direction isn't always as simple as, you know, do it in June or whatever. It was the right time for us, it was the right time for her. And I think that we've got players that can feel that, you know, we've got Fran Kirby, we've got Lauren James, could play down the middle. Of course, it'd be even better if we could have Beth Ingram. It doesn't necessarily mean it's the right thing to do for her and us. And uh, I wish Beth well, but I also know we've got a lot of top players that are also driving me mad every day to play. And I can only pick 11. And managing that is challenging. And I've never denied that. But I think it's... Um, one where probably gives me one less headache. And another former Chelsea player um, announced their retirement uh, this week, Jenny Flaherty, obviously yeah. record WSL uh, appearance holder. Just wondered if you could speak a little bit about her. Well, not everyone will know this, but Gillian was, was, was my player when I was the academy director at Arsenal. And the youngster, 16 year old, so I've known Gillian a long time. and. I also know how important her dad was to her. And I, and I say that with, I can feel tears coming in my eyes for that, the fact that, you know, the, the time, I know how much she's been invested in her football journey and how much she's contributed and I know how much her dad mattered to her. And I, again, I know how hard this might be for her and I'm sad that her career is ending like this but i also to every one of us appreciate is far away from home living in liverpool and none of us earn millions of pounds and she's got mum and family back in london and right now that was the decision that's important for her and i know i need to reach out to her so thanks for the reminder yeah um, and um just finally obviously on the game um, I know you kind of spoke about that little rivalry with Arsenal and maybe kind of how it's, it's bigged up a little bit. I know you've said in the past maybe Man City have kind of been more of a, a rival in the last few years. Do you think that's that's changed over the last 12 months with Arsenal? Obviously Jonas has kind of you know, maybe brought a little bit to the league in terms of kind of personality and just kind of wondered how you saw, how you saw that ahead of Sunday. Forgive me for saying this, they're all the same to me. I've done this for 10 years and I don't, I, I don't even know how many times we faced Arsenal. Probably in the double digits in that time. It's a fantastic game and one that we look forward to. But it's no more significant to me anymore, maybe years ago, 
than it would have been than it will be for the game the following week against Liverpool. However, I love that it's in a big stadium. That for me is the special piece, is that we're going to have a packed crowd. That's something we are excited about, that we're going to play with that noise, that volume. We're looking forward to it.